Yes, ladies and gentlemen, episode 134 of the Journey's Anime titled The Future I See just dropped, and this is part two of the finale of Project Mew. How will it end? Let's find out. This episode continues from last episode where our split teams are dealing with Kyogre and Groudon. A bit of a small skirmish occurs where Danica and Quillian use their Pokemon to fight the legendary Pokemon, but the legendary is too strong for them. For Quillian, the battle turns when Gary gets involved, splashing water on Groudon causing it to turn back. And for Danica, Go and Horus redirect it from attacking Danica using flares, but it isn't until Grookey gets involved and hits Kyogre with a wood hammer that it turns tail. The two groups then follow the two legendary Pokemon and eventually meet up. They see Kyogre and Groudon running towards each other for a seeming attack only for them to collide and turn into Mew before teleporting away. They turn around to see Mew on a glowing, floating rock where it uses some sort of psychic move to make all the surrounding rocks glow as well as sending everyone on Project Mew into a dreamlike vision. There we see the beginning of the universe, the galaxy, and how the Pokemon Earth came to be, and when they all wake up from that dream, Danica touches the glowing rock that Mew was in the middle of, only for it to stop glowing and fall. Not only that, but all the other rocks around the area also stop glowing, and it causes a fight between all the Pokemon in the area. That's also when their technology starts working again. Professor Amaranth calls them, and it seems like whatever that energy was, keeping the rock floating and glowing, was also the same energy that shut down their tech, and once they get in contact, they see Mew above them in the air. With the fossil Pokemon, Pokemons battling each other, Mew dodges their attack before using Thunderbolt to stop all of them. Then the two leaders of Project Mew pull out their two Urshifu to begin fighting, only for them to get shut down quickly with Air Slash. They then pull out their other Pokemon, and Gary, Horus, and even Go joins in. But Go wonders why they're fighting it since Mew is probably just playing around, but Gary says that they need to battle Mew to calm it down. I like the contrast here. Everyone else in Project Mew is to research Mew or to get their own goals like meet Celebi, but Go is the only one here purely for Mew, so it makes sense that he's the only one that understands what Mew is actually doing. The Pokemon that the Project Mew gang bring out all get destroyed by a Shadow Ball by Mew, and Go tries to get Mew to calm down, but Mew uses a fire move to once again not only demolish the hero's Pokemon, but all the other surrounding Pokemon and the environment. Even Gary comes around to Go's thinking that maybe Mew is just playing around, but they still have to find a way to stop it. Go tries to think about how to do it, meanwhile the others continue fighting Mew with their other Pokemon with Novel. It isn't until he thinks about what Ash said to him about never giving up that he tries again. He tells Mew that they met before and because of that meeting, Mew's the reason that he travels, became a research fellow, met Ash, and as Mew is about to use Hyper Beam on him, Go tells Mew thank you, which stops it in its track. Mew then sees all the Pokemon laid out and hurt, so it uses a heal pulse to restore everyone before teleporting everyone of Project Mew away from the mount. As Danica says, it's game over. However, when Go tries to use his catchphrase by saying that he will be back for Mew in the future and that the future is in his hands, Mew lands on that hand, literally giving him the future in his hands, or in this case Mew. It then teleports away before it starts pouring. With the wet season coming back, that means Project Mew is over. The chasers head back to command and there they discuss the encounter with Mew including whether the visions of the universe was actually real or was that just Mew playing around? That's something we'll never know. For now, since Project Mew is done until the dry season, Gary, Horus, and Go are going to go their separate ways. They're asked if they want to stay as chasers, but they all decide to go their own ways. They even get a compliment from Quillian. As the trio is leaving, Go says that he's thankful that he met Gary and he wishes Horus well on capturing and meeting Celebi. And Go heads back, calling Ash and that's where the episode ends. I'm not sure what to think about the end of Project Mew here. The thing is, I don't think the writers ever knew what to do with Go's plotline. Go's goal at the beginning of the series changed from catching every Pokemon to get to Mew to be a part of Project Mew to get to Mew. That change can really be felt here because the ending of Project Mew is Go saying that he'll be back in the future. I guess it's supposed to be like Ash saying he'll be a Pokemon master but in this case it doesn't work because Go's goal is a tangible goal. To be a Pokemon master is a vague enough goal that we're following along even if Ash never does reach his goal. We never know because it's never specified. Here though we know exactly what Go's goal is so him not reaching it or even getting close is gonna feel off. That being said I've always been a fan of the first season of the anime because Ash doesn't win in the Indigo League. He loses bad and really bad and that's because of his hubris causing him to learn lessons. I think that's also why this feels a bit hollow because Go did everything right here and he still failed. That's why it feels a bit weird. That being said it's a fun episode. I like the idea that Mew is showing our heroes the beginning of the universe but also we have to question it because it's Mew. Mew can be an angel and a demon at the same time. In terms of its behavior, sometimes it'll help people, sometimes it'll hurt people. It's a childlike wonder about the destructive power of a deity. 
That's what makes it such an interesting Pokemon. And I think the episode did a good job of portraying Mew as such. Now that Project Mew is over, I'm curious to see what Gold's goal is going to be in the future. Gary and Horace have also left, and I hope they'll be back in the future, but again, I'm not sure. This episode left a lot more questions than answers, but you know what, that's not always a bad thing, so I can't complain too much. I almost forgot to record this bit, but we get another Team Rocket finding another starter from the Paldea region, this time Fue Coco. And while Jessie tries to throw a Pokeball, she accidentally pulls out a berry, causing Fue Coco to run at her, send them flying, and then eat the berry. Again, I don't know if this has anything to do with the next series, or is it just a bunch of small advertisements for the game? I guess we'll have to find out soon. The next episode, Ash, Go, and Chloe are discussing the idea that Go wants to go on an adventure like Ash. They're going on a camp, and the final thing we see in the episode preview is Go crying before running away. What is this leading to? I can't wait to find out. But anyways, that is it for my review of episode 134 of the Journeys anime. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, like, share, subscribe in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on this episode. You can follow me on Twitter at TheRealPDGaming, and that is it. I will talk to you guys later. Peace.